thank you for coming to this session. Uh, let's just start. Just maybe you wanna to, to make the confusion slightly clearer. The pronunciation of my name is Chepitsky, but if you call me Jack Hat, like some of the uh, uh, UK guys, which is a, a translation of the name, it's fine as well. <clears throat> so we already spoke about the name. Uh, and I come from the Czech Republic, which is uh, the very heart of Europe, the Central Europe. And I am involved uh, for a couple of years uh, within the US Geo ecosystem. As a committer to the uh, projects, I was chairing the very first Phos4G Central and Eastern Europe, which evolved into Phos4G Europe conference. I am a charter member of OSGO, ex-board member, project steering committee member, I do translate, I do code, and so on. Yeah, and uh, I would like to bring uh, the open source software we are working on and we are working with uh, to, the, to the normal users in the outside world, somehow. And uh, to make one of the things clear is, if I am referring to Central Europe, I will be referring more to the Visegrad countries, which is the region based on the language barrier, of course, based on other uh, things as well. So don't get me uh, wrong. If you have a look at a, a map I have done uh, or improvised uh, on OS, current OSGO sponsors who are from Europe, there are only a few. Uh, the map looks slightly better if you put uh, if you if you uh, show sponsors uh, of QGIS project, which I would say is simply the uh, most used one among users all over the world. So those are the sponsors coming uh, from apparently Germany. S many of them are from Portugal and uh, Spain and Italy and you probably know most of the companies. Uh, there should be always some story behind the talk as well. So uh, I started with 2002, I installed Linux going to Germany and uh, with some first installation of the Grass GIS project and finding out that I'm totally not able to start it. Even though within a within couple of days, I, as I used to say, on some strange masochistic way, I started to love the way how Grass GIS is supposed to be used. Um, and I even became a, it was my first job maybe after the school, I became a professional Grass GIS developer. Of course, it wasn't in the contract. I was a ricercatore, so researcher at the Italian Institute. Uh, but my full time job was dedicated to Grass GIS development. Uh, but the life brought me back uh, to Czech Republic and uh, I had to change the job and I didn't do any single like client contribution since 2007, ever since. Uh, then uh, around 2006 I started a PyWPS project, so it was my first software child. And I try as a, it was uh, supported by the software, uh, not, not software foundation, it's called Bundesstiftung uh, Umwelt. That means Environmental Foundation in Germany. Uh, and the project grew, and I've rewritten it several times and learned a bunch of new things with Python. Um, and uh, after, for example, nine years uh, last year, the project finished the US Geo incubation. However, last year, my contribution to the project was like close to zero again because of family circumstances and yeah, I had to do my living as well because it somehow didn't uh, never manage to make my living out of coding uh, for on, on this project. So I must be doing something wrong. I, I think all the time. The relationship of uh, 2A open source software uh, is very close uh, to a partnership to your partner. You can you can invest a lot of energy in, this, uh, in, the, in, the, in the software project, but in some way you, has to, you have to be rewarded as well. 
And uh, the question which we as open source developers should always probably ask, and some of us do, but some of us know, is uh, the bus factor. What will happen to the project once I'm gone? Uh, with Grass, this, uh, this isn't a problem because luckily there is uh, more other developers and newcomers coming, thanks especially to Martin Landa, who is forcing his students to join the project. Uh, yeah, but with PyWPS, this might be a slightly bigger problem. But luckily, this is just, just the software, right? So if nobody will take over, the software will die virtually, but yeah, who cares? Uh, one of the keywords I was uh, hitting in the last years is motivation. <clears throat> motivation is the uh, answer to why are we doing this? Why are we sitting at night till 2 a.m. when the family is going to sleep and uh, we try to uh, solve some problems or so write down a couple bit more lines of code and hoping it will work. Uh, so, yeah, why are we doing this? <laughs> uh, from my perspective, uh, we like to make our software because it's fun. And uh, we want other people to use the software too, apparently. Uh, this is our reward, except for money sometimes. But uh, yeah, we go recognized by the community uh, of developers. And even it's even better if we are going to be recognized or our software will be recognized at least uh, by the users as well. Therefore, I always say do not ask what a open source software can do for you, but ask what you can do for the open source software project. Ask yourselves. Believe it or not, for some of the users, if they are going to ask for some support, uh, uh, when, when they are going to start to use the project, a mailing list isn't enough. Uh, some, some people, like individuals, or even some, some, some bodies, like government organizations, schools, and uh, uh, commercial, commercial organizations, they require or demand uh, commercial technical support, whatever that means to them. They are probably not going to use it extensively, but uh, uh, still, they, they want it to have in place. They simply need a one telephone number. They can, they can call there and ask for help. They, they want to have the number, not necessarily for calling there, but just to be there, usually. If I ask the question, if we try to answer the question, what do uh, all the normal people in the outside world, the GIS user, uh, need when making the decision about the software? whether they uh, yeah, go for QGIS or, for example, for some other software. Uh, they need a stable and mature software package with stable and established ecosystem, apparently. Uh, so what, uh, what does a software developer understand under a stable ecosystem is clear to most of you here. Uh, there must be a clear open source license, whatever, BSD, MIT, even GNU, GPL. So even free license. Uh, the software has to be well documented. Um, uh, there have to be regular releases. Uh, I'm usually checking also GitHub whether there are regular commitments, commits being done. Um, yeah, it's always th those would be the, those would be, that would be my checklist. Of course, then I am looking maybe at the community whether there is some decision process and governing body. This is all uh, this is all done if the project is, for example, OSGO incubated. But the first three points are probably the most important ones. I am going as a developer check if I'm doing a decision whether I will use or will not use some library. Uh, developers always think if we make the best software we can, with the greatest documentation, of course, for the developers, users will simply come, just like that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work like that. Uh, Major ecosystem and stable ecosystem from the user's perspective means there is a public uh, training course being available that can be preferably certified. <laughs> there is a technical support I was referring to. There is probably some on-demand development. And then maybe some of the advanced users will check whether there was a release of the software in the last couple of years. Maybe there is a company behind the software with sustainable software resources, but they don't really care. They want this, the, the thir first three points, I believe so. 
I'm not doing statements, right? It's just my thoughts. <laughs> Uh, and if you, co uh, if you look closer on the, what a stable and mature ecosystem could be, uh, most of the users don't really need on-demand development. They are really just looking for technical support and training courses, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, so I call for uh, building warm and welcoming and soft comfortable ecosystem. Uh, uh, and I believe once the ecosystem is in place, uh, the users will be not afraid to come. I'm not saying they will come automatically, but they will be totally not afraid to come. So this could look like this. Could be I, I could pick uh, any other of the thousand pictures on the internet. Imagine some some really nice place you would like to to go. Number of companies uh, with open source geospatial focus in our central and European region or East European region is close to zero. So this is the map of OSG sponsors one more time. There is no single company in this region. Uh, there are a couple of companies in Romania and in Poland sponsoring QGIS directly, but none of them is in Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia. I'm speaking now about the money donation. I'm not speaking about the individual contributors uh, to the projects. So when do we success? Uh, uh, well, uh, when do we success? When, when, when there will be a stable and mature ecosystem? That's, that's the scope, that's the target. I, I believe, perfect, thank you. I believe uh, there have to be simply more companies in the region, right? If there will be uh, five commercial companies offering the services, competing in each other, maybe co uh, have some collaboration as well, then they, I would call it a success. Uh, and therefore, we started a for-profit company uh, to support the local communities, uh, to help them to build from the commercial point of view. Uh, and we like to beat the proprietary software uh, providers on their own playground. Uh, there is another software project uh, we were involved in in re recent times, uh, uh, GIS Quick. Uh, with the idea of, yeah, let's make a web mapping application based on QGIS uh, because it's fun. But this time it was different uh, compared, for example, to PyWPS. Um, this time we were looking for, we were users, customers focused. And uh, we, we, we simply, we, are, we were looking for, we were looking for, and we are looking for uh, not users, but really customers who are looking for technical support and our help as well. Even though this software is GNU GPL software, so free software, anybody can really not only use it, but make a fork and continue as well. And it seems that it's, uh, that it's working there, uh, uh, from the long-term perspective. If, they are, if the software is developed with financial budget uh, uh, in behind somehow, it seems to be working if we try to, to get uh, financial support for the project from the, from the very beginning as well. But we are software engineers. Uh, so myself, I'm a forester engineer. Of, or I have my engineering in forestry. But still, I want to write a code. And um, I, don't wa I want to solve the problems. I don't want to do the paperwork. Nobody is uh, interested in our group to make sales advertise, uh, and take, I would call it, a real world or economical world responsibility. Lessons learned for myself. Maybe there have to be someone in the team around the open source project who will not write the code down, who will not even write the documentation, but who will take, uh, simply take care on the boring, from my perspective, stuff. Um, yeah. You already know that working on a software, uh, open source software, doesn't, uh, it's not the, just the development, it's not even the writing the documentation. Uh, it's also uh, making sure that the software is sustainable from a long-term perspective. And uh, we need also to build the environment from the software, uh, as I was saying, the technical support and stuff like that. Therefore, open GeoLabs. We help the ecosystem of open source geospatial to grow 
this is our motivation, this is our, why are we doing the, all this boring paperwork and accountings. Um, we want to make people stop using proprietary software and we want them to move to open source software and to free software as well. Uh, two days ago, maybe yesterday even, there was a question uh, in the B2B meeting, what should I say to customers who refuse to open, uh, to use open source software and better go to pr pr proprietary alternatives? Uh, shall we change the customer? Uh, as you understand already from my talk, from the presentation, no, we have to work on the environment completely. They are looking for. And maybe then later when they come, we can educate them how the communities are done and how they work. What we have done so far, uh, we have a GIS mentors webpage uh, under this, well, let's call it trademark. trademark. Uh, we would like to share the trademark with you guys as well, the GIS mentors so that um, we can offer public uh, training courses. And uh, we do it the open source way, the open way, and that means all the training courses are on GitHub, are using Creative Commons license, uh, the training materials are generated and to be found on training GISmentors.cz, mostly in Czech, of course, but since we are focused on the region, but there are some English materials already being translated uh, to uh, every year we make, uh, or uh, they are, we have more than 200 attendees on our uh, workshop. So there are more than 200 new people uh, being educated in open source geospatial software, which is not bad, I believe, for a country with 10 million inhabitants altogether. And we started technical support too. We don't have any signed contract yet, but the technical part from our side is ready, and now we just have to go to uh, do the marketing, the boring stuff. And of course we offer our users, once our customers when they arrive, uh, the custom development to the projects we either directly contribute to, like Grass GIS or GDL, or of course PyWPS, or the projects we are able to find a support within a network uh, of other similar SMEs around Europe, like for example QGIS. Uh, this is how we look, and we are a registered OSGO on S OSGO service provider, and uh, apparently, as you can see on the picture, we are slightly different. I don't know if uh, we can talk really seriously business here. Yeah, we try to pretend at least. So one more time, do not ask uh, what the open source software can do for you, but ask yourselves uh, what you can do for the open source software, and this is what we have done. And don't focus on the software development only. Try to set up, as I was saying, the ecosystem or envi environment for it. That's all. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Joachim. And um, yeah, it was really uh, some, some uh, eye-opening uh, things uh, here. Um, I guess there are some questions here. We have time for questions. It's Please don't be shy. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Joachim, with... Um Open Geo Labs. How do you, how are you crossing the bridge that people expect some sort of certified training or you know certified people to deliver stuff? Is there a specific program you have, or can you just make it up? Well, first of all, thank you for your questions, and secondly, I didn't under, I didn't hear well, but uh, how do we cross the bridge? What I got uh, from the people who are expecting a certain level of certification as well. Okay, um, since there is no certification program within OSGO for the users, um, even though there were several attempts, <laughs> uh, the, the only certification program is for QGIS, and it's not actually telling you anything about the quality of the program you, you are offering, it's just telling you that you contributed to QGIS development. Uh, I, hope, I hope I understood it correctly. It's a long-term work. 
our certificate from GIS Mentors, if you get one, it's already being recognized after the four years, or I believe, after the four years of doing this uh, within at, in the Czech, uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia. So, so how do we cross the bridge? Is uh, means uh, by the quality of the work and in, uh, in uh, over the long time period. It's, so it's very demanding. <laughs> Yeah, talk to me wherever at the conference I build here. Yeah, Moritz. Just out of curiosity, where do your customers come from mostly? Uh, when I look at, at least within Belgium, we feel there's a lot of demand coming mostly actually from public administration. Um, we haven't seen that much demand coming from private companies in terms of training. Thank you. Um, Doing statistics is a boring work and we don't do that. Uh, but just a rough uh, image uh, from our registration system, uh, which is, by the way, open source software. You, you can use it for setting up a, your own training courses. Um, it's half and half, uh, which is great, I mean. Uh, the people from the, from the commercial private businesses are coming because of, I don't know actually why they are, they are coming. Simply, they are interested in uh, the GIS. Some, some, some of them are completely newcomers, and our QGIS training course is their ever first GIS course they ever attended. So, therefore, we have to always adjust slightly the topics. Uh, and I'm, by the way, not the one who is giving the workshops. Not even Martin sitting here. We have just much better guys doing this. Um, um, yeah, and uh, from the public administration, there is a lot of people coming to, and they are usually coming because they, the government cut their budget, and uh, they are simply looking for some alternative. Therefore, the motivation to come for them is usually negative, uh, the first one, but to our experience, it seems to be that after our training course, they are being positive about the open source software. And then we have a bunch of students because the students' uh, uh, fee for the training courses is we keep it as low as possible uh, and hoping that we will educate and make uh, new users addicted to the open source software. <laughs> So just a follow-up, very practical question to you. Um, normally have fixed dates, we say we, we are going to give a QGIS training on that date, and that, or is it mostly on-demand training? Okay, I just wanted to show you this uh, registration page, and of course it's a completely different one. Uh, yes, to make it short, yes, uh, we have a fixed gate uh, where people can, I hope this is the one, perfect, uh, uh, we have a fixed web page with fixed states and always uh, try to uh, keep, uh, motivate the users to submit as soon as possible, of course, because we then have to make arrangements for the, for the uh, uh, workshop room. Uh, from the commercial perspective, it is very, very good that we are partnering with uh, Czech Technical University. So again, the fee we have to pay for the, having a computer room set up is relatively, is, is very low. It's very low. It's working pretty well for us. And as you may see, the QGIS Beginners Workshop is uh, already being sold out. There are more than 12 people. We keep to uh, hold the number not f much over 12 people at one workshop, and there are always two people in the room. Uh, otherwise, it's very, very exhausting for the ones who are giving the workshops. I'm afraid that's all from the time perspective. So we talk to me. some time because the, the break is after. Okay. So <laughs> you can fill this okay. We have five minutes if we can. Maybe I should mention here GIS quick, uh, GIS lab project here. Uh, if we want to set up the whole environment, we don't rely on OSGO Life as the message. OSGO Life doesn't work well for us. We are using a GIS lab uh, project uh, 
yeah, talk to me or Martin Landa, who is here in the room with the graphs t-shirt, uh, if you want to know more. This, uh, this in, with GIS Lab, we just set up the uh, 20 computers within like no time. They just have to boot. Uh, and then they are sharing all the drives and having all the process and all the software as well as uh, data shared. Thank you.